Namo Ami Dabbits. Namo Ami Dabbits. Namo Ami Dabbits. Welcome to Buddhism 123. We will continue our introduction to Shin Buddhism, uh, which started about April 8th on our Wednesday evenings. Last week, we shared how Shin Buddhism really takes an optimistic view of life. And that's easy to understand why it is the largest school of Buddhism in Japan. After it becomes natural, Shin is a very easy practice. People have a feeling of joy. However, it is a practice. We must recognize what we have already received. So how do we recognize what we have received? We have suggested using this technique of saying the words, thank you. The coin toss exercise that we did last time really showed us the difference of selecting what we have received as opposed to what we think we want. We make this crosswise shift and to do that we think of the words please and thank you and we make that shift from please to thank you. And today we will talk about the process of how we make that shift. I talked about my grandmother known as a devout Shin Buddhist and how she naturally saw this shift and saw something positive in about everything she did. Reverend Sagan Yamaoka, who was formal bishop of the BCA, took what he called the six aspects of endowed changing. And what he was talking about was that in the West, we need an educational process as an introduction to Shin Buddhism. Because in Japan, it's not needed. As it is, many of the principles of Shin Buddhism are incorporated in the daily language and life and custom of Japan. I have learned something from my grandson, Corey, who is almost five. I watch him, and as I realize that what he learns from adults and his parents are what he does. But everything he does has taken steps. It's taken a process. It starts out with a very easy, concentrated step. If you think of everything you've learned from playing a musical instrument, driving a car, playing a sport, it starts with a very concentrated first step. And that is what we're trying to do here on Nembutsu, Namo Amidabutsu. The first step needs to be practiced over and over again. Playing an instrument, you may have to think about the notes you're playing, where your fingers are, how to blow on an instrument, or uh, play a piano, or whatever. Eventually, with practice, this becomes natural. And this is what we're attempting to do. Practice something over and over again until it becomes natural. Now, what's the practice we've used in Nembutsu? Sometimes we say, just say the Nembutsu. But what is the experience behind it? Unless we have a practice behind it, it's very difficult to really know what that means. Dr. Tai Tetsu Uno has told us that hearing is a method of practice. Hearing is a method of receiving. And he used the term deep hearing. But hearing is something that we have received. And so it is realizing that we receive things and that practice could be listening and realizing what we have already received. We can think about selective hearing. We husbands seem to have that. Sometimes we would hear the words, uh, clean the garage, and we might not hear that very much. But then in the car, our wife might say, wow, look at that woman with the short skirt. Suddenly we could hear that. So there's this process of seeing or hearing what we prefer to do. As an example, let me give you a story about a family of four walking down the neighborhood to the corner. Now, as they walk down this neighborhood, the father sees a broken rain gutter, and the mother sees decorations on the front doors. And the teenage boy happens to see a nice sports car in the driveway. And the little girl sees a kitten playing in the shrubbery. As they continue, the wife never sees the broken rain gutter, and the husband doesn't see the decorations on the door. The little girl doesn't see the sports car, and the boy doesn't see the kitten. Why is that? selective seeing. We have a tendency to see what we are interested in. And so we have the words from Shinnan, clouds and mist hide the sun, but beneath the clouds and mist there is lightness, not dark. What are we seeing? 
the clouds and mist of ignorance, or the lightness under the sun. I mentioned that my grandmother was able to see that lightness. If she would break a dish, my cousin would say she might exclaim, oh, broken dish, that's good for the potter. How can we do that? We can do that by a practice of slowly appreciating all the things we have instead of looking at the clouds and mist of all the things that might happen to us. This is our experience of Namo Amidabasu. This is how we can practice. It may seem a little awkward, but it's like the karate kid, kind of waxing the car, painting the fence, doing these things that seem unrelated, but finding out that thank you is a basic step and is an essential thought in the voicing of Namo Amidabutsu. So our process is to develop the selective scene, and we already have it. If you're thinking about buying a car, let's say you're thinking about a, a blue Camry. All of a sudden, you happen to see a lot of blue Camrys around. Did they just start to develop a lot more blue Camrys, or is it our selective scene? So this is, again, artificial, almost uh, concentrated way of looking for things that we can express our gratitude. Thank you. So again, the first step, look for things in our daily life that we have taken for granted. Could be things like putting on the light switch, turning on the faucet. But just develop this habit of saying thank you. And I think you will see that your life lightens up. One practice that I advise uh, people to do, which we may not be able to do in this time of COVID pandemic where we're isolated in our homes, but the next time you're in a car and you come to a stoplight, rather than thinking about the dark clouds with the red light, say thank you. Because when we're saying thank you to the red light, it means that the green light is letting the cars in the opposite direction go. And it is this acceptance of what is. These are some of the ways we can shift our thoughts from please, I wish the light were green, to thank you, I appreciate that it's red, because now others can go and we can avoid an accident. So I recommend this for the next week, finding all the little things you can say thank you toward. And this shifts our hearts and minds toward a life of gratitude. As Shinran says, voice Amida's name. And being mindful of the Buddha always, respond in gratitude to the great benevolence. So with that, please join me in expressing our deepest sense of gratitude with the Nembutsu. Gasho. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts. Namo Amidabuts.